Okay, welcome. Today we're going to look at some very cheap antiques, collectibles um, and curios I have bought at charity shops and flea markets. Stick around, hope you enjoy. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Walter O'Neill and I run AntiquesArena.com. And I'm a UK antiques dealer. I go around car boot sales, charity shops, flea markets, private house clearances, and I pick up some absolutely amazing, wonderful treasures. And it, purpose of today's video, I'm going to show you what I bought, how much I paid for it. Um, you can see what you think. Let me know. If there's anything you like, it's all on AntiquesArena.com. Okay, so... New style of video recording. Let's get to it. So I'm going to start off with this was my first charity shop find. Now, this did not come in cheap. We have an original World War I American dog tag stamper and can, can you know, tin can stamper. Uh, by stamper, I mean it's like a punch plate. So you got all these different... Um, letters and numbers then you have a bronze hammer and an anvil and you have some plates there um now these this is world war one i've got some details for you as well um these were given basically to the sergeant in the barracks who would then replace any lost or damaged dog tags um it was issued in the first world war no doubt it probably served through to the second Look at that. See, so you have the dog tag in the top and you have the meat can at the bottom there for stamping. This is a complete set. Now you ask yourself, how as a World War I dog stamping you know, kit found its way to South Wales, UK? I have no idea, but I, I just love this. Do you imagine the names of people whose dog tags this have stamped? Sadly. Well, a lot of them would have perished in the First World War. Um, but what an absolute wonderful bit of history. Now, if I come across here, they have one in the Bullock Museum. And it talks shows you here the, uh, the exact identical kit to what I have. A complete kit, same as what I got. Mine is a complete kit as well. Uh, and it comes down here talking about all World War I dog tags were hand stamped. Dog tag stamping kits like this one were issued to a company supply sergeant and kept under tight control. Kit was used to replace and replace and repair lost or damaged dog tags. The kit came complete with brass anvil, hammer, and tin plates. Exactly what I got. And then it talks a little bit about how dog tags came around, first of all, in the Civil War and so forth. And that was the most important item for identifying fallen soldiers and they have it here dog stamping kit circa 1918 so if i go back to it now this kit actually cost me 50 pounds i paid 50 pound in a charity shop for this kit but as i've said it is complete and i absolutely love the history behind it to find something like that in a charity shop is fabulous check i am sharing yes i am Moving on, another charity shop find. This is beautiful. It's in Art Nouveau style. It's not Art Nouveau period, but it is in style. It is done by Masons. Uh, it was a very, very good, long established name, but done for Liberties of London. Look at that. Now this cost me a whole two pounds. It is absolutely beautiful. It's in mint condition. There you go. So it's Mason's Ironstone, made in England for Liberty of London. Um, Ianthi, right, if that's what that says, uh, 1987. So as I said, it's in the uh, Art Nouveau style, not in the um, period, but look at that. And it was done for Liberties of London. Breathtaking or what? Two pound in a charity shop that really was a good find then i had a pair of these now these are not as old as they look but they are a pair of staffordshire dogs spaniels they're fully hand painted and they're a big pair 
I'll have a look at the size in a minute for you. But they are beautiful. Hand painted and underneath, well, they have a bit of craze in terms of them. They have a little bit of age. Underneath, wrote England, no doubt by the artist, whoever painted them. They probably were blanks when they had them. I had a pair. They have no chips or cracks, and they're 12 inches tall, so they're a good pair. And I've only put them up for £55, but they only cost me £12 for the pair, which is neither here nor there. These were gorgeous. They are Italian glasses. I gotta try and read this. Crist Aleria Fratelli Fumo. Basically Italian designer glasses. These were a wedding present to somebody and they were never ever taken out of the box. And I love the combination of the crystal top and the red or cranberry stems. Absolutely beautiful, look at that box. Only made in Italy. In condition, set of four in the box, and they come in for two pounds from charity shop. This I love again, another charity shop find. It's a trench art lighter, um, depicting a jet. Then, as a the lid, the, the jet flips up and down to cover it. Unfortunately, it has some damage, even with damage, you can see I'm asking 40 pounds. I only paid three pound because of the damage, which could be repaired. There are people who repair it, and this type of trench art is very desirable. There you go. The airplane lifts up blood to cover the flame area. What is broke? Blood? If you look, you can see there that should house the roller. You know, when you strike a lighter, you have a little roller which has two pins either side. It's lost the pin and lost the roller. So it needs a little bit of attention. It's going to need another one of those pillars by there put up, put on, and a new roller, and obviously a spring and flint. Uh, but you, would you want it working anyway? This is a beautiful piece of trench art. Look at that. Nice bit of light there. Cost me £2. Oh, it's just a lovely thing. Is it £2 or £3? It was either £2 or £3. I haven't checked my book. This one... I bought this. Um, I actually saw another dealer in the charity shop while I was buying it. Um, and he had a look. And first words he said was, these don't sell very well anymore. It didn't last six hours before it was sold. This is a vintage Wedgwood purple glass, smartled glass elephant paperweight. And it is gorgeous. Look at that color of that glass. I do good photographs as well, mind you, which does help. And there you go. It is oh, go back. It is signed to the base Wedgwood, England, and that sold within a couple of hours. And it came in for one pound fifty, and it sold for twenty pound literally within a couple of hours. It didn't take long. I don't think it. I don't think it lasted twelve hours before it was sold. I don't wish everything was that fast. This is one of two frames I have. And this one is absolutely gorgeous. I bought them um, when I, well, in the last video you saw, I showed some of the stock from Resolving Flea Market where I went with uh, Elaine from Anagram Antiques at Pontypridd Market. And I bought two picture frames there on the day. I paid five pound for one, which is this one, and two pound for the other. However, they had no glass, they had no backboards, nothing. I've done that. I didn't do it. Wayne Hankins of Mountain Ash Photograph Studios done that. And I didn't pay anything. He didn't charge me. And these are beautiful frames. I'll show you the other in just a moment. So £7 for two frames. And this is sort of Rococo style. Absolutely gorgeous. For, is it French or English? I'm not sure. It's Omelou on cast iron. Or gold leaf, if you like, on cast iron. It's absolutely stunning. I love this flowing uh, leaf, scrolling leaf movement to it it's a beautiful thing there you go would that class as an easel picture frame possibly but it's had new backboards new glass and it is ready to be used and that that one particular one cost me five pound and then this one cost me two pounds this one isn't as old this is a lot more modern um still vintage got some age not as nice as the other, by any means. There you go. 
but still a very very attractive uh picture frame and again the glass and backboard didn't cost me nothing come from wayne in the mount oh i'm very grateful for um i take a lot of stuff to wayne so sometimes he don't charge me other times he does um i just paid for the wedding package so he didn't charge me on these because he's doing the photographing for the wedding this again another charity shop find <clears throat> Now, the tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered in Egypt, I think, in 1922. So in the first couple of decades after that, there was a lot of souvenir ware that came out of Egypt. So I presume that is from when this came from, but it is beautifully engraved. This is a large example. Um, it's 10 inches tall. It's got a couple of tiny dents on it. I mean, tiny, minor negligible. But the engraving on it, the entire thing is engraved and it's absolutely gorgeous. I've got some close ups here. So you've got the pyramids there. I have no idea. Is that a pharaoh or something? You got the bird in the mirror there, snake. Uh, you get the point. The entire thing is fully engraved over. Just a nice thing. And the identical one on eBay is up for like £300 on eBay, asking price. So, but yeah, I paid £15 for that from the charity shop. I bought two pieces of brass on the same day. Um, I think either £25 or £30 for the two. And the other one was big planter with a rope tassel, which I'll show in another video, probably. This, I love, again, charity shop find. It looks like everything today is a charity shop find. Now, this is a Japanese eggshell tea set. Now, the tea set is hand-painted. It comprises of five cups and saucers, not six, unfortunately, sugar bowl, milk jug, and the teapot. It's all hand-painted. It's painted with dragons. But what's more with this is it is the Geisha Girl set. And what I mean by that is if you hold the, bit, the cup up to the light you'll see an image of a geisha girl in the base of the cup. It's not printed on, that's how they mold the... Um... Bear with me, I'll find it now. That's how they mold the bottom of the cups to show it. We will get there. There you go. It's not the best picture in the world, but there you go. You can see the geisha girl there in the bottom of the cup. Now, you did see a moment ago that it was stamped foreign. Where are we? There. Now, you get a lot of things from Germany and Japan, both stamped foreign, because of the wars. Um, a lot of stuff after the war come out stamped foreign, whether it was from Germany or Japan. Um, and that was so it could sell. But it's a beautiful set. It's all hand-painted with dragons. The only damage on it is, was that little bit of gilding way that I showed just now. But beautiful things. The blue is done like clouds with swirls and white opaque through it look like clouds. Beautiful thing. No chips or cracks. And I paid £8 for the set. Now, I've got 120 on it. But if you look on Google, some people on Google are asking 250 300 350 for sets similar to this. There have been some sold on eBay, you know, 30 40 quid. Um, but there are also some on eBay sold at £100. This is a particularly nice one. The dragon is a very sought-after pattern. It's nice with the hand-painted on there with the blue. So it was a nice set. For £8, it was a cracking little find. Same day as I bought that, from the same charity shop, I bought this, which is a 19th century Victorian cut glass tea caddy mixing bowl. Now, tea caddy mixing bowls are literally that. They would go in a sarcophagus tea caddy or something like that, a big wooden tea caddy, and you'd have your tea either side and in the centre you'd have a bowl where you'd put your teas in, you'd mix it all up and then serve it out. Now, these tea caddy bowls pull money. People don't know what they are. In fact, I might share with you tea caddy mixing bowls now. So should images... Victorian or antique, and I'll bear with. So, just to give you an idea, uh, somebody's bound to have one. There we go. So, if I zoom into here, that's what they would look like. You'd have the two tea chests either side, and then you'd have the bowl in the center there. 
and you can see there's multiple variations there's a couple of layer of different ones i've already got on my website yeah let's, let's go to shopping so you can see prices um where are we at let's get the cut glass ones it's not coming up Let's go back. Right. So I'm all selling. I'm selling antiques. Whatever that is. Georgian tea caddy mixing bowl. Price. Does it say price? Doesn't say price. Tell you now. Um, most of them you find will be 60, 70, 80 pound plus. No one sold. So no price on that. Well, you can see they sell. You gotta actually email those. Anyway, they're worth anything sort of 40 to 100 pounds, depending on how good they are and how old they are. So really nice, nice little find. Come in for two quid. <clears throat> I think they thought it was just a little vase and we go through the four doors it's a nice little tea caddy mixing bowl you can see the wear on the foot look at the wear on that that is what good authentic wear looks like of a couple of hundred years old or 150 year old of glass look at that that is not somebody who's just gone like that on the floor that is what authentic wear looks like you find out on drinking glasses on anything of that age and then I found this. I think this is the last one on the stock. It's a little ashtray. It's Art Deco 1930s. You have Mr. Bumble. So you've got Mr. Bumble there. He's holding, I'm not sure, is he holding like a flagon or something? He might be holding a flagon or a bag of money. I'm not 100% sure what he's holding. You've got an onyx base, white metal uh, cigarette holder there. Now, I did do, do some research. There's none of these available, period. Now, you can get some of the figures on their own. And the figures, they're like 30 and 40 pounds of the figures because they're produced by Royal Dalton in the 30s. Um, but to have it on an ashtray, it's quite nice. And the, uh, the onyx is in good condition. It's not too chipped up. And, you know, there it is on the back, Mr. Bumble. And again, this was a £2 find in the charity shop. So, what do you think? That's some nice charity shop finds again for today. Uh, my favourite is by far the dog tag stamping kit. There are some available. Um, I think there's two available, one at 400 and another one around 5, 550, something like that. So I have undercut them both. Um, but what a piece of history that is. I just think of, it could have stamped anybody's name. It was in service in the First World War, no doubt stayed in service in the Second World War. And whose names did that stamp? And off they went to war and or, or absolved didn't come back. Uh, so finding a wonderful piece of history like that for me just makes makes the day so special. Um, I don't know, there's some lovely little finds in there, some very cheap finds and some very good finds. So hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have, I would appreciate a like, share, comment, and all the rest of it helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps the channel grow. Thank you very much, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.